Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite builds out in Diablo 4 right now. This is going to be a Diablo 4 beta build that is all about the rogue, and all about basically being a monk in Diablo 3 again. I love playing the monk in Diablo 3. Now that we don't have a monk, I have to kind of take that playstyle and really add it to the rogue. So we're not going to take any of the bow or arrows type of abilities. We're going to focus on the fun stuff that is, like I said, fun for me to play. And it's actually very viable in this beta. So the first thing we're going to take is definitely Invigorating Strike. It's going to give us increased energy regeneration by 20% for 3 seconds. We're also going to take this right behind it. The damaging and crowd controlled or injured enemy with Invigorating Strike increases its energy regeneration bonus to 30%. That's going to help us a lot because it's really going to give us a lot of different, uh, you know, energy bonuses or energy increases that is going to allow us to use our next ability nonstop. That's going to be the flurry. So the energy cost of the flurry is 25. You're going to actually do a lot of damage. It's going to strike enemies in front of you four times, dealing a total of 219 damage to each. So, of course, we'll take this five times, get it all the way leveled up. Now the damage right now is at... 306 you can actually get it to the next rank at 328 if you do get an, a weapon or a i think it's an amulet for the most part that is going to increase your rank of your core skills so let's move on and make sure we take enhanced flurry as well so each time flurry damages a crowd controlled or vulnerable enemy you are healed for one percent of your maximum health it's pretty nice to have and you can also go with the evading through an enemy will cause your next flurry to stun enemies for 2.6 seconds or you can go the if flurry hits a vulnerable enemy it will make all enemies hit by the cast vulnerable for three seconds i really don't care which one you want to go here in this in this case whatever you want to you know play for yourself i typically take advanced flurry but uh you don't even need honestly either one so I also want to take a look at this left side. So if you are dying a lot, Sturdy is a huge, huge passive that you are going to want to learn. It's going to give you 4% close damage reduction, and that's going to help you quite a bit stay alive. As remember, we are melee range nonstop in these fights. You're going to take a lot of damage, so this damage reduction is going to be huge to help you stay alive. So let's click on a few of these and see how much of those we can actually take to complete the build. Um, if we come down here to the bottom right, you're going to see a lot of different options, of course, for mobility. Mobility is huge in this game, of course, and one thing I love to take is dash. It's just going to be that mobility that you constantly have up where you can jump quite a ways and get around the map very quickly. I don't take anything crazy after the dash. Enemies damaged by dash take 20% increased critical strike damage from you for 5 seconds. If you are going to take one, that is the, uh, the extra bonus in the agility skills to take. So let's continue on a little bit farther. Also, guys, at really quick, if we go back to agility skills, if you're going to take the weapon mastery, it's not bad at all to do exactly that because you're going to have increased overall damage. And that's basically the same quality passive as sturdy with 12% close damage reduction. Getting this increased damage is huge. So very, very nice to have. If you want to put three points into that, you definitely can do so. Next up, we go down to the smoke grenade down here on the bottom left. This is going to be really the main focus because it's going to throw a smoky concoction at enemies that dazes them for 4.58 seconds. We have mine right now at uh, rank two because of a couple items ranking it up for me. So we just click it once. We'll get that rank three right away, which is awesome. And after that, we are going to also take the enhanced smoke grenade. It's so good because it's going to increase your damage that, uh, you know, enemies are going to take from you by 15%. It's a huge amount of damage that you're going to do. We're also not going to take anything after that, though. If an enemy is vulnerable, slowed, or chilled, then Smoke Grenade will daze them for 20% longer. Or you could take Lucky Hit, so dealing direct damage to enemies affected by Smoke Grenade has a 25% chance to reduce its cooldown by one second. Not too interested in either one of these right now because we have limited points. This is at level 25, so for now, we are going to skip past those and... Uh, yeah, there are also a lot of other different kind of passives that you could take here. Using a cooldown increases your dodge chance by 3% for 2 seconds. Really not bad if you want to start jumping in on that and taking more of that passive. We're going to skip out on that for now because I want to show you guys the next part of this build. It's going to definitely be the Shadow Imbuement. Shadow Imbuement is going to basically imbue your weapons, festering shadows. Your next two imbuable skills deal shadow damage and infect enemies for 6 seconds. Infected enemies explode on death, dealing 175 damage to all surrounding enemies. That's a lot of extra damage. If you take a look here as well, we have the enhanced shadow imbuement, so you have a 25% chance to increase critical strike chance against injured enemies infected 
by shadow imbuement. So this is nice because injured characters have less than 35% of their health. It tells you exactly what injured means in this situation. This is going to be very, very nice to have that 25% increased critical strike against people affected by the shadow imbuement and really they have less than 35% health. You can also see here enemies damaged by shadow imbued skills have or really take 12% increased non-physical damage from you for eight seconds so you could go that route we're not going to do it here and then shadow imbuement's primary explosion makes enemies vulnerable for two seconds not a bad route at all if you are looking to kind of avoid stacking shadow imbuement for the more explosive damage and you want to continue to take some of these passives we also have the shadow crash so shadow damage has up to 10 percent chance to stun for five point or sorry 0.52 seconds which you can always go as well. If we go down a little bit more, you can see that we need three more points in before we can pick our ultimate skill. So you can do any of the ones I just talked about. They're really all viable. I kind of like the vulnerable, but I also like to increase the explosion damage on our shadow imbuement. Uh, the one thing that you could also do is you could come back up to this top area and we do have the weapon mastery maxed out and we have the close range damage reduction maxed out. Uh, you could also heal for 1% of your maximum life when you critically strike close enemies. It's going to keep you really sustaining very well in some of these fights. So definitely feel like you can go for that if you want. But I, in this case, am just going to take more Shadow Imbuement because I love the explosions. It reminds me of Exploding Palm Monk builds in Diablo 3. So we're going to take one more, two more. And then from here, we probably could just take this Blended Shadow Imbuement, which is going to give us that vulnerability on exploding enemies nearby so that's good we have two points left to really finish out this build so let's do exactly that so first up we have the shadow clone the shadow basically mimics your actions for 15 seconds the shadow deals 60 percent of your damage until you get up to this top one then it'll deal 80 percent if you take the supreme shadow clone passive but we also have the death trap which is a lot of damage to each enemy in the area, 1,097 damage, that is. Uh, we also have Reign of Arrows, but uh, in this case, to really keep it feeling like you are playing Diablo 3 Monk build, and to have a lot of extra damage behind you, I really do like the Shadow Clone build. It's going to help us do a lot of extra damage when we're just attacking any mob around the area. We also have up to 10% chance to gain a energy on Lucky Hit which is pretty dang cool because this is going to continue to give us as much energy as we possibly need. You could take that or you could take your Unstoppable for five seconds after casting the Shadow Clone. Either one of these is going to be a great option. In this case, though, I do like Prime Shadow Clone because Unstoppable is huge. Characters have all crowd control effects removed and prevented. So if you're stunned up, you save your R for that big boss fight, right, where you get iced or you get stunned up in any way, shape, or form. You pop your ultimate, you're instantly out of that CC, you're out of that stun, and you can't be CC'd for the next four to five seconds. So a huge, huge ultimate here that is going to have a great passive to help you throughout some of the Diablo 4 gameplay itself. I do want to say, guys, this is a Diablo 4 beta build. But I do think it's going to have viability in the main game unless a lot of things change, really. So definitely take a look at uh, you know future builds. And we'll also have some gameplay here in just a minute that you guys can watch as we go through. But if you have not already, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. I'll see you guys all in the next one.